Well, hi, everybody. It is a premiere night. I'm Gretchen here with Story and Art, and I am bringing you a couple of stories tonight. I am not able to do a live tonight because I am with my grandkids. So, yeah, um, but it is not a night to be missed. Um, it is this, if you're seeing this at the time of the premiere, you know we're in the midst of the first week of October. Two amazing things happened during the first week of October. Fat Bear Week, which, oh my gosh, I read bear books all year long, so I'm the name. But this week, what is happening is Ban Book Week, and it is the, the emphasis that we librarians like to put on books that have been banned for who knows what reason and usually more often well in my opinion ridiculous and it is fighting for that right to read and for the right to choose and to have free libraries open where anyone can go in and pick out the books that they want to without repercussions and that they're there available for anyone and everyone. So this is banned book, banned more? Yes, a year ago I read some banned books and I'm back. I mean, it was, I think last year I read um, Sylvester and the Magic Pebble, woo. Um, we also have since read the book, the story of E.B. White and know that both Stuart Little and Charlotte's Web ended up on banned book lists at places. Oh my goodness. Terrible. But tonight I have a couple of books that ended up on a list or lists in various places. And I decided I would look up what was the cause or the reasoning. And in, <laughs> in this particular place, and this is actually, I found this repeated. It was people coming to a school board saying they didn't want the books in this library. They want, didn't want these donations. They didn't want the books. They da, 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 da. And it was all about they 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 were complaining about the group that was donating the books and they were saying that the group had marxist tendencies or all this kind of things come to find out some people on the school board did some investigation and looked into the group that was donating the books and they had nothing in their ever publications, ever any kind of rhetoric about anything subversive, anything that, uh, that this, but the people that were <coughs> saying, um, that it was, um, it was, they decided despite not, despite not reading any of the books on the list, uh, one grandmother uh, remarked, those books will not help our children. There's no reason to be segregating the world anymore. Uh, that's not what it was about. <laughs> and that there had been, the superintendent had said that there'd been a significant uptick in kids having questions about environment and race and immigration and bullying and historical figures with diverse backgrounds. And he, that the staff, was really struggling with finding resources for the kids and having those conversations. <laughs> Turned out most of the books on the list that these people wanted banned were all books that talked about things like racial diversity and, and historical things that happened and bullying and uh, environment and immigration and all of these things. And they said, um, this, what was it that they, the, the parent, one of them said that just, oh, the, the, uh, the, one of the school board members says that just as silence condones bullying, ignoring differences in our communities makes people feel overlooked and pushed away. And they were trying to push for these books to be put, brought in. Um, anyway, 
they ended up not accepting the books. <laughs> and uh, we're not accepting the books, but uh, we are to go out and address diversity, which was just a lame excuse. The titles that the district, that, that, that they were, these people were objecting to, that this group objected to were um, All Because You Matter by Tammy Charles and Brian Collier, Alma and How She Got Her Name, Let's see, The Boy Who Thought Outside the Box. See, see, these are some of the familiar ones that we've read. Brave Girl, Clara and the Shirtwaist Makers Strike of 1909, Coretta Scott, the story of Coretta Scott King. Really? <laughs> um, let's see, Crown and Ode to the Fresh Cut, The Day You Begin, A Different Pond, Drawn Together, Dream Builder, the story of architect Philip Freelon. Really? Dreamers, Eyes That Kiss in the Corners. Remember that beautiful book? Oh my gosh. Um, the photographer who, uh, let's see, Gordon Parks and How the Photographer Captured Black and White America. Really? Um, Hair Love, Hidden Figures, the true story of four black women and the space race. Yeah. Um, hold on to your music. I am enough by Grace Byers, which I read. I am every good thing. I can write the world. I dissent by Ruth Bader Ginsburg makes her, or I dissent. Ruth Bader Ginsburg makes her mark. That book we read, we loved it. It began with a page. How Gio Fujikawa drew the way. Oh, and Kamala and Maya's big idea. Layla's Lunchbox, a Ramadan story. Little Leaders, Bold Women in Black History. Little Legends, Exceptional Men in Black History. May Among the Stars, Malcolm Little. Um, Mama's Nightingale, Missing Daddy. My Puppy Has a Motorcycle, which we love that one. Uh, the Name Jar, The Name Jar, are you serious? Planting Stories, The Life of Librarian and Storyteller, Pura Bel Prey. Really? The Proudest Blue, The Story of Hijab and Family. That was amazing. Rosa by Nikki Giovanni. Ruth and the Green Book. Schomburg, The Man Who Built a Library. That, oh, remember that one. Uh, Separate is Never Equal. One I'm reading tonight. Sing a Song. The Undefeated, We Are Grateful, We Are Still Here, We Are Water Protectors. Remember that one? Uh, when Lola visits, We Are Alone, Where Are You From? The Whispering Town, Your Name is a Song, Fry Bread, just to name a few of those books that we have read and wondered at the beauty of them. Yeah. Children being, uh, being unilaterally denied access because a few don't like them. Hey, I was a school librarian. If you wrote me a note called, said, I don't want my children, child checking out this book. Fine. I put it in the notes. Parents said that. That's fine. They didn't check it out. It did not restrict the other 500 kids in the school. And that's the essence of this, of the freedom to read and the freedom for the family to decide and the parents to be involved and the kids to have a say and for us to know about so much more than what is just the general surface knowledge. So tonight, tonight you get a couple books from me. And the first one is called Fry Bread, a Native American family story. And it is amazing. Fry Bread. Written by Kevin Noble Millard, illustrated by Juana Martinez Neal. Oh, yeah, this is going to be good. 
look at this end page, how it's set up. Those are names of native tribes from all over First Nation, all the different ones. Just fills up two pages, goes on and on. So beautiful. Fry Bread, a Native American family story. Fry bread is food, flour, salt, water, cornmeal, baking powder, perhaps milk, maybe sugar, all mixed together in a big bowl. Fry bread is shape. Hands mold the dough flat like a pancake, round like a ball, or puffy like Nana's softest pillow. Fry bread is sound. The skillet clangs on the stove. The fire blazes from below. Drop the dough in the skillet. The bubbles sizzle and pop. Fry bread is color. Golden, brown, tan, or yellow. Deep like coffee, sienna, or earth. Light like snow and cream. Warm like rays of sun. Fry bread is flavor. See beans or soup, smell tacos, cheese, and vegetables. Delight in honey and jam. Rise to discover what brings us together. Fry bread is time. On weekdays and holidays, supper or dinner, powwows or festivals, moments together with family and friends. Fry bread is art, sculpture, landscape, portrait, our daily craft, shared from teacher to student, a cycle of heritage and fortune. Fry bread is history, the long walk, the stolen land, strangers in our own world with unknown food, we made new recipes from what we had. Fry bread is place. Alaska, canvas, all the way to Maine, down to Delaware, on to Georgia, over to Oklahoma, Colorado, and California, cities and land we call home. Fry bread is nation. Abenaka, Apache, Arapaho, Ojibwe, Onondaga, Oglala, Sioux, Narangasset, Navajo, Nipmuc, Seminole, Shoshone, Sac and Fox, hundreds and hundreds of tribes. Fry bread is everything. Round, flat, large, small, north, south, east, west. Brown, yellow, black, white, familiar and foreign, old and new. We come together. Fry bread is us. We are still here, elder and young, friend and neighbor. We strengthen each other to learn change, and survive. Fry bread is you. Shows the recipe for Kevin's fry bread. One point pint boiling water, one cup cornmeal, one and a half cups cold water, instant yeast, raw sugar, sea salt, he says. Added cornmeal to the boiling water. Tells how to do this. Authors note, the story of fry bread is the story of American Indians embracing community and culture in the face of opposition. It is commonly believed that the Navajo Diné were the first to make fry bread over 150 years ago. The basic ingredients may appear simple, 
flour, salt, water, and yeast, yet the history behind the community anchor is ever anything but. Despite colonial efforts throughout American history to weaken tribal governments, fracture indigenous communities, and forcibly take ancestral lands, Indian culture has proven resilient. In strange, unfamiliar lands, exiled natives strive to retain those old traditions and they created new ones, especially for food. Survival meant adapting and those ancestors isolated from familiar meats and fruits and vegetables got by with what they had. Without the familiar indigenous crop of corn, historic farming practices and dietary traditions drastically changed. Many tri tribes trace the origin of modern Indian cooking to this government caused deprivation. From federal rations, rations of powdered, canned, and other dry government issued foods, fry bread was born. Fry bread is food. And he goes through and he talks about each part that he did with the book. It's so cool. Fry bread is art. The handmade dolls and coil basket featured on this, on this spread are part of a rich inherited history of both the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma and the Seminole Tribe of Florida. After the Great Depression, tribal members in Florida opened tourist villages and sold handcrafted handcrafts as an alternate source of income during a period of economic insecurity. Enterprising Seminoles sold crafts, fabrics, and keepsakes to visitors to the villages. Dolls dressed in traditional clothing were a signature souvenir. Doll making grew into a cultural tradition passed from ancestors to their descendants like a grandmother teaching a grandchild just like my grandma did. The doll bodies held by the children on the right page can be made from the fronds of palmetto tree or sweetgrass leaves. The dolls may also have elaborate beadwork sewn together. So it's all that shows about the history. Ah, so cool. Beautiful, beautiful book with references and this amazing end paper. Wow. Fry bread. Yeah. I love that. That is a beautiful book. And that is the story that I have tonight for this band book week. I have another story, but it is that I want to read and it's called Separate is Never Equal. I'm going to save that for another recording. It's a longer book and um, just deserves its own story time. So before we go, though, we need another poem. And the poem that I have tonight is the poem called Equality from Poems for a Better World. Equality. Walk to school each day or come in a fancy car. We are all equal. Whichever language we use or words carry, our words carry equal weight. Slick fashionista or sweatpants loving human, we are all equal. Whichever features we have, our bodies don't define us. Star student, or one who doesn't enjoy reading, we are all equal. Whichever bathrooms we choose, each of us wants to feel safe. Pray five times a day or say no prayers at all. We are all equal. Whichever land we come from, let's cultivate happiness. A kinder world waits for all of us to catch up. We are all equal. And that's a Renga poem. The first poet writes the first three lines of it in 17 syllables, and the second poet writes two lines containing seven syllables per line. And here is a Cuban proverb. Oh, when the sun rises, it rises for everyone. Irene and Charles say, we first began discussing the concept of equality while writing the book can I Touch Your Hair? Poems of Race, Mistakes, and Friendship Together. 
We see equality as the end goal, but equality can be achieved without equity, which refers to treating people fairly according to their individual's needs. Something we're learning about every day. We are different people with different needs, but underneath those differences, we are two humans striving for happiness. We are joined by our belief that all people deserve the same opportunity to follow their dreams and experience the world no matter how different they are from one another. Ah, read aloud to someone a book of your choice from the list found on page 113 to 115 and have a conversation about what it says to you about equality and equity. Let's take a look at those pages. Hang on, see if I can get there. 113 to 115. Let's see. What does it say up there? There we go. Oh, books, poems, and speech referenced. Additional recommended books. Oh my goodness, we'll have to spend some time with those, won't we? Oh my, yep. Yep, those are books we'll have to look at, see what they have to do. But that's going to be it for this premiere, this recording tonight. I'm going to come back, which that poem will lead us perfectly into the next premiere of the next book that will be Separate is Never Equal. Another book that has hit the hit the shelves and then hit the band book lists so fast. So anyway, just take a look online, see what books are out there that have hit that list. The ones that, uh, how many of your favorites as a child have hit the, the giving tree, seriously, the giving tree, um, all kinds of books, Sylvester and the magic pebble. They go on and on where the wild things are. <laughs> All of these books that, for some reason, just, no, it's the freedom to read and the freedom to imagine helps us gain confidence in our freedom to make choices and to make choices about what we believe. And that's the biggest freedom, or one of the biggest freedoms that I think we need to encourage and celebrate. So everybody, give yourselves a high five for being here. Thank you very much for letting me share these books. And, you know, check out not only the banned book lists and see what you can check out of your library, pick up a book at your local bookstore, see and share it with somebody that you care about. Also, check out the bracket for Fat Bear Week, you know, at some point. Vote for your favorite. <laughs> Gotta have a little <laughs> Fat Bear fun, too. And until next time, keep looking for the beauty hidden in plain sight. It's all around you. But the first place you'll find it is when you go look in the mirror. And I'll see you next time. Uh, not you, not you, not her, not him or them gonna stop me from getting mine now. Uh, not you, not you, not her, not him or them gonna silence my rising in the child. Uh, and every time I look up in the sky, I know it'll be all right. Every time I look up in the sky, I know it'll be alright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, gotta get mine.